Hi, this is PDF Bergzorg Arcade at bergzorgarcade.com and this is tutorial 130. Now when we left off last time we were just about to create the tooltips for our items. So let's go ahead and jump right into the item class. And I'm just going to go right down to the bottom. And make sure that you're still in the class, so above the enumeration below. And I'm just going to make a public. Uh, this is going to return a string. And I'm just going to call it tooltip. Now it does not accept any parameters. And all I'm going to do here is basically format the basic uh, variables that we have and kind of output them so the user can read, read them. So let's just start off uh, real simple. We'll just say return. And then basically just start building the string. So we're going to say name. And then we'll add a special character onto the end, an escape character, which is the slash n. And what that does is it tells uh, the, the string to go down to the next line. So we're going to have name on one line. Then after that, we want to add, oh, let's do the durability next. Now I'm going to go down to the next line because this string is going to get pretty long. And I kind of want to be able to see it without scrolling the mouse too much. So I'm just going to tab over and we'll do durability next. So I'm actually going to say, you know, what this is. So durability, I'm going to put a space, then another quotation. Then I'm going to add the current durability. And then to that, I want to add a slash as in a division sign. And then we'll concat on to that the maximum durability. And of course, now we'll add our new line character again. And now let's go down to damage. So the next line will be the damage and I'll start off with the minimum damage. And the minimum damage can easily be calculated by taking the max damage and multiplying it by our, oh, I'm sorry, that would be for weapons. <laughs> uh, so let, next we'll do value. And we're actually gonna take value and stick it above our durability. So right after durability here, I'm actually just going to put the semicolon and just before it, I'll add the value. So value plus and then we'll just do the value. Then of course we want to add the new line character and put the plus sign on the end so it knows to keep adding. So let's save this off. And I'm going to go into my GUI, or class, and I'm going to find the loop window function that we made. I'm just going to shrink down our inventory so it's a little less cluttered. And our clear window. And here's our loop function. And here is the for loop that actually displays all of our buttons. Now we see that when we click it, it adds it to the inventory, moves it from the chest. We still have to add a check there to make sure that it's actually added to the inventory before we remove from the chest, but we'll get there. What I'm going to do is before we actually add it to the inventory, I'm going to start off by doing a debug log. And all I want to do is take the item that we're currently on, which we can just cut and paste right from here. I'll put that in, then hit dot tooltip. And we'll save it. I'm going to head back into Unity. And I seem to have a couple errors. So we'll just take a look. The best little overload match for. So we'll just head into Mono Develop. And I just forgot my parentheses at the end of Tooltip. So I'll save that off again. We'll head back into Unity. And the errors are gone. So let's test it out. We'll start it up, run up to a chest, open it up. And now when we click on stuff, we should get some basic information here. So a lot of it doesn't show down here, but you should see it all down here. So we can see that the name is, well, MW38, which is, well, we can't actually see all of it, but it, it, it is right. 
Uh, it has a value of 47 and a durability of 53. Uh, let's click the next one. Oh, actually, I'm going to clear it. We'll click the next one. And you'll notice it's a little different. And we'll do the next one. So we see that the value has changed and the durability. So it is assigning random values to it. But we actually want the tooltip to actually show up on screen. So let's go ahead and stop Unity. We'll head back into Model Develop. Now all your GUI elements can actually have a, a tooltip. And the way you set that up in C Sharp is, let me just make a space here. We create what's called a new GUI content. And this can take up to three parameters. As you notice, there's eight different functions. There's one that takes nothing. There's one that takes a string that's the text that's going to be displayed. For instance, we're displaying the name on the button right now, and that's what this one would be. And the next one takes an image, which we'll be using a little later on to actually put our icon there. And the next can take a string and an image. So if you wanted to put your image up and have some text over top of that, this is the one you would use. And the next one takes a string for the, the name of the button, or at least what's displayed on the button, and another string for the tooltip. And of course, there's also one that takes a, an image and a string for a tooltip, and another one that takes a string, an image, and a tooltip. And then there's another one that just takes a GUI content source, which we're not going to touch on. Let's just start off with the, the basic ones. Uh, we're going to implement the, uh, the name first for the button. So this returns a string. And the next thing I want to do is return the tooltip. So I'm just going to copy that, paste it in, and instead of getting the name this time, I'm going to get the tooltip. Put my parentheses at the end. And I think I'm missing one. There we go. So that's going to create a new tooltip for us, but we still need a place to actually display this tooltip. So I'm going to come down to the end of our function here, and I'm going to add a line that will actually display our tooltip for us. Now I'm just going to display the tooltip uh, as a label. Actually, let's get a little bit fancy. Let's put it in a box. So down here, I'm just going to create a GUI box. We'll want a new rec for it. And I'm going to put it, well, let's put it halfway across the screen. And I'm going to make it 200 wide. So I'll subtract half of that, which is 100, so I should place it evenly in the center of the screen. Now let's move it down 10 from the top. And I've already said it's 200 wide, and I'm just going to make it, oh, 100 tall. Now, as far as what we wanted to display, we actually want to put the tooltip that's given to us there. Now, there is one slight problem with this, and we'll see when we start it up what's wrong. So I'll go into Unity. We have no error, so I'm just going to start it up. And I'll run up to a chest and open it. And when I hover over it, you'll notice that our tooltip is showing up over here. Even though we said to be 10 from the top, uh, what's actually happening is our, if we go back to our code, our tooltip is actually being, or the box that the tooltip is being displayed in is actually inside of this window. So we have to find a way to break it out of the window. And unfortunately it's not as simple as just copying it and throwing it in our GUI. You could try that. So we'll just wait for this to start up. And as you can see, it's in the right spot now. But when we hover over things, nothing happens now. So we're going to have to figure out a way around this. So let me just go up and I'm actually just going to take this again and I'll put it back to where it actually did work. And actually, let's create our own little system to create a tooltip for us. 
But since we're headed up on 10 minutes here, that's going to have to wait to the next tutorial. <laughs> I'll see you then. Bye-bye.